We're pleased to have world champion, WBA light middleweight champion, as a matter of fact, Austin Trout on the line. Austin, how you doing? I'm doing very good, man. God is good. How are you doing? Pretty good. So how's it feel? I mean, February 5th was your day, apparently. You became world champion. You went into Guadalajara, Mexico, and defeated Rigoberto Alvarez. Tell us about it. Yeah, you know, um, I'm on top of the world right now. I, I'm feeling you know, very accomplished, feeling a little, you know, pressure to get back to work. Um, I'm feeling a lot of different emotions right now, but most of it is joy. How was that, the ups and downs of actually waiting? I mean, you were off, what, 14 months, and also you had the venue changed a couple of times on you. So did that was it a way of them playing uh, mental games with you? Or was it, does it just come with the territory? It, it's both. It comes with the territory, but I think that the frequent changing the venue was, was my game. And all it did was just make the victory even more greater. Mm. So what was the game plan uh, going in that you and uh, Louie there, your, tra- your uh, trainer, Louie Burke, had going before the fight? Well, it was, it was you know, hit and don't get hit. <laughs> we knew we were faster, so we were going to capitalize on our speed and, you know, throw some combinations on him and, and definitely move out the way because he's a strong guy. Did you expect the fight to be that easy? I mean, did you go in with the mindset that you had to knock him out, especially since you did you were in his home country? Yes, I thought the fight was going to be a lot uh, tougher, to be honest. Um, I was prepared to go to war and with the mindset of going to war. But, you know, it, it, it's fine. I'll take easy fights, too, if it ends up being easier than I thought. So what kind of reception did you get there in Guadalajara? Were the people positive to you before and after? Or how did that, that right. change after your victory? They were very positive before and after, not during. <laughs> before the fight, you know, they were very, very warm and opening and, you know, wanted my autograph, my picture. After the fight, you know, it was the same, trying to get the photos and interrupting the TV crew for pictures. And, you know, the people were awesome. Right? They, they actually, they helped the trip go a lot smoother. During the fight, you know, I got booed a little bit, but it was all expected. So how did you react to that? Did I mean, it was the first time, obviously, that you've had this much TV exposure. And, uh, I mean, was that just a whole different mindset? Or, I mean, is it something that you felt prepared for? No, no I felt prepared. I, I kind of put it in the back of my mind. Mm. So it was the third time that you actually fought outside of the United States. Um, do you or do you hope uh, to have more fights within the country or maybe even here in New Mexico? Yes, I'd love to bring some uh, fights home and do the defenses. But I do, I do would like to travel the world still. I feel like being a world champion, you can't stay in your country the whole time you're champion. So I, I am excited to still travel the world. So you're 22 and 0 now with 13 knockouts. Have you heard anything about being made the mandatory opponent for the uh, Cotto Mayorga winner or anything? Well, that's what's supposed to happen. Well, you know, I'm not going to wait for it. Mm-hmm. Is, if if uh, they decide to fight me, that'd be great. But Cotto Ica will sit on that belt for 18 months if he wants to after the Mayorga fight. <laughs> Is there anyone else in that weight class that you would like to fight? I mean, names like uh, Eris- Erislandi Lara, Julio Cesar Chavez. Uh, Vanis Martis Ovian, even who I mean, who would you like to fight? I uh, actually, my my class is packed with so much talent that you could pick a name out of a hat, and I'd be happy to get in the ring on a nice scale uh, network and give it to them. You know, I, I feel like I could beat any one of these guys. So how would you feel about fighting back in New Mexico, man? Maybe even in Cruces or Albuquerque. I mean, big show, maybe get you and one of the young up-and-coming uh, kids. I mean, maybe you and, and Archie Ray uh, with Archie on the undercard of on, under you. What 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 possibilities do you see happening? Uh, the possibilities are endless. But that is definitely one possibility that we would like to, to make happen. Uh, I got to come back home and play for the fans, you know, that, that watched me growing up in the game. And it's only a matter of time before you know, we get the right opponent and the right opportunity to bring one home. So you did defeat Rigoberto Alvarez last weekend. Is there any plans? Would you like to fight his brother, Saul Alvarez, who is in the weight, same weight class? I would love to. It would be, you know, be all part of the plan. And if that happens, that would be great. You know, there's a lot of talk right now about me and him getting it in. But, you know, we'll see what happens after this next fight uh, in March that he has 
against Matthew Hyde, and, and a lot of answers will be answered after that fight. How do you see that fight between uh, Hatton and uh, Saul Alvarez going down? I think it's probably going to go as it should. Saul Alvarez is going to beat him. Matthew um, Hatton, he's a tough guy, but uh, I think he's going to expose a lot of Saul's weaknesses before getting beat. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the reception that you got there in the, the El Paso airport from both people, citizens of the city of El Paso and Los Cruces. How was that, man? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was breathtaking, man. It was real cool seeing all my family, friends, and just fans, you know, welcome me home. So, I mean, I, you're world champion now, man. How does, how has the last week been? I mean, have you done a bunch of interviews and just, has it been a little yeah. stuff for you? It's been a, you know, a lot of interviews, a lot of uh, meet and greets. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm happy to do it. It, it comes to the territory, and you know, I'm just glad. Uh, I'm glad my town and my, my area is getting excited about the things I'm doing now. It, it seems like it's been long enough. So, how did you originally get into boxing? My mother, she, well, she's always been a fan, and we always, you know, watched all the fights. And I've always been a fan myself. And then when I found out that there was a boxing gym here, and I bugged my mom to take me in. She she brought me in. And it worked out because, you know, I was kind of small for my age, so basketball and football was, wasn't my strong point. Mm-hmm. And boxing just fit in perfectly. You know, I was able to fight somebody my size, my age, which was really, you know, fair, and I just loved it. So when you were younger, who did you try to emulate or just model your game after? Um, I really like Pernell Whitaker. Um, I've watched a lot of the older fights with Sugar Ray Leonard. And, um, you know, silly guys like that. Like, I also started watching Roberto Duran tapes, and mm-hmm. he's kind of opened up my mind to a whole different type of style. Who do, who do you consider the greatest boxer of all time? Um, you know, it's going to have to be... I guess I would say Ali. Pacquiao, he, he's... Gun for that title, though. Okay, so today you believe, uh, say, between a fight between Mayweather and Pacquiao, who would you think would win that? I honestly think Mayweather would beat Pacquiao because Mayweather has the tools and the style to beat Pacquiao. If you notice that that man gets a lot of guys that just come to him mm-hmm. and let him punch circles around him, mm-hmm. you know, whereas Mayweather's not going to let him do all that. Yeah. I mean, it would be very frustrating for Pacquiao to be missing all the hundreds of punches that he throws. Uh, I think Mayweather at his be- right now would be Pacquiao, but you better not wait too much longer because, you know, it seems like a lot of things are piling up on Mayweather. Oh, yeah, his head might be in. Mm-hmm. So I understand that uh, your daughter was in the state spelling bee this weekend. Yes, yeah, she was. She, cause she qualified to represent her school in uh, her city in Albuquerque. As a parent, how proud does that make you that your child is able to achieve that level of uh, success? Oh, and it makes me feel successful myself because uh, this is her third time qualifying, by the way. And she she got fourth place this year, but she uh, oh wow she's such a smart little girl, man. It's it's, it's very amazing, you know. God bless me, with the perfect kid. Mm-hmm. So now, do you have any shout outs or any shameless plugs there? Go ahead and announce your Twitter or your Facebook or anything, man. Go ahead, it's your time to shine. <laughs> All right, y'all can follow me on Twitter at No Doubt Trout. All over the case, you know, facebook.com slash no doubt trout. Uh, um, you could get my t shirts in the Las Cruces area at Sports Accessories, uh, 250 North Solano at Sports Accessories to get your official no doubt uh, shirts. Um, you can also soon you'll be able to get them on austintrout.com. I want to thank my mother, my girlfriend, family, you know, my sister. I love my kids. I want to thank them for everything that they've just done, for supporting me, loving me, and I've Last but not least, I want to thank God for the success and opportunity that he's bestowed on me. And I want to thank you guys for bringing me on the show. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you for joining us here on The Low Blow with and uh, NM Combat Sports. I mean, we'll keep an eye out on you. Hopefully, we can have you on before your next fight, your first defense of the title. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So definitely an Austin Trout, actually world champion, WBA light middleweight champion of the world from Las Cruces, New Mexico, Austin Trout. Austin, thanks for joining us. All right, no problem. It was my pleasure. Take care. Thank you.